Hello and welcome and in today's video I'm going to be showing you the top 10 best beginner arc teams and that means just if you're new to the game not if you're early on in the game. In a number 10 I've decided to put the Carnotaurus as I find this is really an effective and useful creature to have in your roster it is just so nice and very easy to tame yes you could say the aloe is a great one as well and i'll give it uh here as a spot on here sorry as an honorable mention but i find the Kano is just the better creature for me but i'll let you decide that for yourself what is the better creature for you in terms of ease of taming and just the the overall size of the creature and mobility and damage and health and all of those factors really do play in and for me the Kano is always the creature which i'll go for feel free to disagree in the comments down below I do not mind if your opinion is different to mine. But for me, again, the Kano is just the one for me. Compared to the Aloe, I vastly prefer the smaller size and I like just having a smaller carnivore. I also find they're easier to tame as well, just by a little bit because trapping them is easier considering the Aloe usually does spawn in a pack. Although in ASA, that's less apparent because baby versions of the creatures can spawn and it's pretty much the same in terms of difficulty. The only real difference is the Kano is still slightly easier as killing a Kano is a little bit easier than killing an Aloe, especially if there's some others about as well. But you know, there might be some other Kanos about in this instance too. The Kano also does the bleed ability and I like the amount of mobility it has. I can feel reasonably stealthy and quite good with myself while traveling around and demolishing loads of creatures around me with this thing and that is why I really like it as a beginner arc tame. Next up, we've got the UT and although you might might not be thinking about bosses quite yet i find this is a really nice one if you are new to the game as yes maybe a rex is something which you go for and a rex is something which you definitely can but i find the ut in most places is generally just a better carnivore to use around the map the spino is a great option as well but i find the ut is the easiest option to tame out of those three and you still got that courage roar and the fear roar tons of mobility and a lot of damage dealing they are just really great carnivores to run around the map with and use all across arc they are very sufficient for all of your big carnival needs their stamina is good their health is good their weight is good their damage is good and obviously they've got those abilities as well so you know they're even nicer to use and they're better at swimming than the wrecks i know you're probably not going to be using these things as a uh, underwater carnivore but i find they really are not the worst for that job and if you need to cross some sections of water you won't find it too difficult to do that with the UT. Next up we've got the Stego. You can either really choose between this, the Trike and maybe the Parasaur, possibly a Diplo or a Bronto as well, although this is my preferable one. Also sorry about all the flickering in this BR. I should probably re-record it when ASA sort of fixes itself up a little bit because um yeah it wasn't doing the best when i was recording this and shadow flickering was a uh, very commonplace in the game it still really is on the island not really on scorch because uh there's a lot less trees about and generally a lot less shadows about or maybe the issue's just fixed really on that map the stego obviously has gone through some tlc for release and it, uh, i mean before no since it's been released sorry in the early stages of the game and it makes it even better because if you're a pvp art player then uh, even if you're new to the game you could possibly do some lower level raiding with one of these creatures you can get into the high-end ones as well but turret soaking with this thing on maybe a kind of mid-tier base is going to be something which you can do solo with one of these creatures obviously by using the i think hardened plate is the one for turret soaking the heavy plate is good for gathering wood and the sharpened plate will gather you all your berries and things like that which is what i would use it for from a pve perspective and obviously that's what i mainly use it for as a pve player then at number seven i've decided to put the pteranodon as well yes they're going to be really great viewers to being in a team i find there's some better ones out there you may have put this higher and that is totally acceptable but this really for me deserves to be in the number seven spot no higher or no lower it is a very easy fly to tame probably the easiest kind of really good traveling mount out there to tame just apart from one 
creature, which has actually made it right the way into the number one spot because I find it's better and it's even easier to tame than this thing. The only real difficulty is the map that it spawns on. But still, as a beginner arc, uh, player, you might have access to those maps and might not, and you can differ this list depending on what maps you have. But I am uh, contributing all maps into this but mainly kind of focusing on maps like the island and those free DLCs because you know in theory uh, most people are just going to have a lot more playtime on those and they're going to be playing those first or just generally playing those because the they don't have the other maps. Then a real difficulty for this is the saddle, the chitin or keratin can be a little bit difficult to get. I find go with chitin, it tends to be easier. Just killing kind of insects that you can find around, the small ones like the Titan Amira and the Mega Neura, and you'll have a good time with getting that chitin. You can obviously get it through keratin as well from the carb enemies, which are the turtles you'll find on the beaches, but go through insects because you'll get it done a lot faster, and obviously they take a lot less time to kill. I wasn't really quite that knowledgeable back in like 2015, 2016. But um, at least I do know that now. Obviously, the Tyranodon is very easy to tame. Bowler it and you'd use a club or some tranks. Club if it's a low level. Tranks if it is a higher one. And then saddle it up and you get yourself a fast agile fly, which can be used for both PvE and PvP scenarios. The Thyla maybe you wouldn't think of as a beginner tame. But trust me, if you take your precautions properly, you can get this uh, creature tamed properly, well, and efficiently. If you have yourself access to the Thylet Saddle, which I think is in the level 40 or 50 range, as far as I'm concerned, you can obviously check that as well, uh, then this creature is really going to be just great for you to have, as the trap can be very simply made with some wood, and then simply trank it out when it's in the trap. Obviously, look for one on the rubber trees, you'll probably want yourself a Tyranodon as well, or just a flyer to get around. You can do it on foot with some other creatures, but I find a Tyranodon is quite an easy and effective creature to use to tame one. Then, once you've got it into the said trap, then trank it out. Obviously, make sure you've got some armor on too, at least chitin, really, because you don't want to be killing yourself in a scenario like this. Put some sleeping bags down if you're not sure if you will survive because they're going to come in real, real handy. So you don't have to go back all the way to your base and you might not have another Tyranodon lying around. So it's going to be a long while until you get back to the Redwoods and that Tyranodon might die as well because you can't get back to it in time. But then once you've tend one, you've got yourself one of the best, if not the best creature really on the island just for everything in general. Obviously, it's no Berry Gatherer but it still can deal the bleed ability and it can climb any kind of wall or vertical surface. It is extremely mobile and generally an all-round great caving and carnivore to have in your roster. It is an amazing creature and I really do like people that use a creature like this and I like using a creature like this. It really is a good one, which actually, if you prepare for it, beginners can actually do it with relative ease. In number five, we have got ourselves the Baryonyx and this is gonna be the best caving creature out there for you. Yes, I said the Thyla was good. The Saber can also do some stuff as well, but the Barry is really gonna be the one you're gonna look out for when it comes to caving. Again, you might not be thinking about that yet, but trust me, get one of these things, they'll be great for caving. They have the health, stamina, and agility to get through those things, and on top of that as well, they are the right size to fit into all of them, really, apart from the artifact of the Skylord Cave. Don't even try bringing any creature into that, you're gonna have to do that one on foot. They also just are great creatures for general mobility around the map as well. They can get a lot done when it comes to travel. Not quite as much as the Thyla, but they can jump around and they are really good swimmers, which the Thyla really can't justify. Also, I do find they're a little bit easier to tame too. Their special ability while underwater is the fact that they can do a spin attack, stunning creatures up to the size of a Megalodon. And that makes them really good for the underwater caves as well, which again, again, you may not be thinking about, don't know why I said it twice, but either way, um, yeah, you might not be thinking about that yet, but trust me, that time will come at some point and it's just better to prepare 
first and you can still use the same as for a great traveling mount and combat creature. Next up I've decided to put the Crystal Wyverns on the list and it, yes the Wyvern does deserve some attention and a lot of respect but if you do have Crystal Isles which is a free DLC obviously Ragnarok is as well so you can have access to the Wyverns for free then hop on Crystal Isles and get yourself some Crystal Wyverns. You do need to be level 60 so get yourself a note run done. If you don't know how to do that look up there will be some similar tutorials online for note runs that you can do on Crystal Isles. Trust me it will be easy you'll have no issues doing that whatsoever then get yourself some trank arrows and probably a sufficient trap to trap one of these wyverns then obviously you're going to knock it out and get that primal crystal then find a crystal wyvern which you'll find to be the most desirable for you for my preference it is blood crystal wyverns but you might like the emerald crystal wyverns or the tropical crystal wyverns more just pick whichever one is most appealing to you then uh, there's a specific spot you can go on its back kind of where you would ride it and get onto that spot of it and then you know just press e and it's going to stop passive taming and you can just stay on that spot and then every time it tells you to feed it keep pressing e and then eventually you'll tame this thing make sure you have enough primal crystal though because that can be a little bit of a difficulty so you always use the app dodo decks if you're unsure of uh what you're going to need for taming it's not going to be the most accurate thing in the world but it will give you quite a good assumption for what you can expect so overestimate that a little bit and then you should be fine but yes they're the wyverns but just so much easier to tame and i find that elemental abilities are even better and they're not really difficult to tame in number three i've decided to put the dynonicus again you might not think of this as a tame that you can get quite early on as a beginner but still these things are really easy go on to valguero if you haven't already and get some of these things spawn in the chocolate biome i'm not actually sure what spawn point is but you know it's the biome that looks like this i'm pretty sure it's quite central it's sort of near the big lake that's in the middle of the map then you're going to want to find yourself some dynamicus nests kind of make sure you have a grappling hook or actually you can just kamikaze go in and then try and run out and then wherever you die then just pick up your body from there and get out and go to your base then just put some torches around this egg and raise this thing and then obviously have sufficient meat at the time to bring this thing up they really aren't very difficult you don't have to worry about imprint and all of that yet they're not going to be used for boss fighting when you're first getting them. Once you've got that saddle though, you can really use these things as great carnivores to travel around the map with. And once you've got a nice breeding pair, you don't have to worry about taming them this way anymore. And then obviously you can worry about imprints and all that when you start getting these creatures ready for doing your boss fights as they'll have a better chance if obviously they've been fully imprinted and it's just gonna help their stats all round. They also take no fall damage which is just great for their traveling and like the Thyre they can scale any kind of wall or vertical surface. They really are good tens for traveling and I love them for this use and considering how easy they are to tame for all you beginners out there really go on Valguero and tame one of these things because you will definitely not regret it and you can always just transfer onto whatever map maybe you're uh, trying on a little bit more because Valguero might not be your main map at your time. In number two I've decided to put the Argentavis as I find this is just generally a really great creature all round. It has a variety of abilities and generally it is one which you can find abundantly across the island's mountains and it is just going to be a go-to. You may not consider it as a beginner tame again for the ladder sub the saddle level, which I think is 61, something around that. But trust me, with note runs you can get there pretty quickly and you can still be a beginner to the game and get into the level 60s. Then once you've got one, which can be done with a very simple trap, I advise you to trap and then you lure it in and then you obviously close the trap off. Trank this thing out, you can just use a crossbow, you don't really need to worry about the long necks for even things like that. You don't really need to worry about that long like, for most things where you can still use trank cards right to the late stage of the game, but you know it's advisable and you can even get into shocking tranks too. But trank cards will do just fine for a team like this. And then you've got weight reduction, things like metal, crystal, and obsidian. They can carry all kinds of creatures as well as that. Their smithy axe and saddle making them really great for traveling to places where you go in caving. Just carry your baryonyx in the claws of the RG, take it to wherever you need to go. For whatever cave you're doing and then when you get out if those also plurals have damaged any of your armor then you can simply just repair it in the RG. Also if your RG is low in health you can always eat something 
and not in your inventory explicitly, but just eat a dead creature or just kill a creature and eat it once it's dead. And then you're gonna get yourself a nice regen buff and it will definitely come in handy. And in number one, I'm designed to put the May Wing as I find it, considering its saddle is unlocked at level 18, it is absolutely insane how good this is as a glider. And yes, you may not have Gen 2 at your disposal. And that is perfectly okay. You can always moderate the list and get something like the RG or the Crystal Wyvern or the Dynamicus for all of those needs. But I just find they are just so good at gliding, I do have to warrant putting them in at the number one spot. They are the best travel mounts in the game, in my opinion, and they're so easy to tame. A few signposts, you just track them in a position, and then boom, like that, just give them couple of trank arrows the saddle again is unlocked at level 18 really early on and you can have yourself this amazing creature which is in my opinion again the best gliding creature in the game they also are really good swimmers as well which you might not expect out of these things but when you could kind of think of them as a pacifist it sort of makes sense they also do act as a portable be breeding trough as well so maybe if your dynamicus needs feeding early on you can get yourself that may wing to feed it obviously you can just put meat in its inventory but you know i'm fleshing it out a little bit and on top of that they can gather berries too like the stego but they've just got so many other nice attributes that i really do have to put them in at this spot first up we have got ourselves the quetzal and this creature in my opinion is one which is extremely underrated mainly due to its speed as a lot of people just say well it's so slow i literally can't use this thing it is the most useless creature out there and albeit i do admit that its speed is pretty slow for most people's standards it still is an extremely useful creature for any general task which you may do in any given arc scenario for pvp players and for pve players it works both ways as you can use these things as great metal gatherers albeit they don't gather metal they just transfer metal so maybe resource transferers and you can even build a base on the back of this thing as well which can actually be a pretty op strat in some pvp situations although i would probably go with a raft base over a quetz base but definitely for pve use it is a really cool thing to have and i don't really get why people don't talk about these things quite as much anymore next up we have got the carb enemies and most people probably just view this creature as a source of keratin and Albeit, it is a great source of keratin. If you need keratin, always kill a carb enemies. That's just the way you go. Keratin's a lot easier to get from insects, by the way, and you generally get a lot more of it. So I wouldn't generally get keratin for things like saddles, but in the if you want to have keratin, then you can get keratin from these things. But the thing is, with this creature, it is a great window into the underwater world of Ark. And it's the only real underwater able creature that I'm putting on this list. Like none of the other creatures here are really great underwater creatures. But uh, maybe apart from the next one actually when I'm thinking about it. But this creature is a really great opening creature into let's say ocean exploration. Because it's reasonably quick in the water. Albeit it's not going to be the fastest. And it spawns on land so you don't need to go into the ocean. Albeit an ichthyosaurus can be obtained pretty easily these days. And you know across all time really but there's there's loads of traps if you want to do that for an ichthyosaurus not really strictly necessary but they spawn in shallow areas and get those but having a carb in the early stages to get some of that oil gathered in the early stages just really seems to help me out next up we have the beals of bufo and this creature has to be here come on the king of cementing paste gathering and albeit some of you may just say well this isn't an underrated creature at all and it's like the best creature for me pretty much because i can get so much cementing paste with it a lot of people don't use it and i used to be one of those people a couple of months ago and i've switched to this thing now and i really can't go back like it's so consistent in the way it gathers any kind of cementing paste. There's only really one kind, but you can technically say there's many because there's loads of different ways of getting it. I would usually get it from beaver dams, and quite a lot of art players do. It's just really easy, and you could obviously craft it as well, but that is quite slow. Whereas with this thing, you can just kill loads of insects, go into the insect cave on the island, and boom, you can have tens of thousands of cementing paste, and you might actually be encumbered because of all of that. But either way, you can just get so much with this thing, it really has to be on this list. And it is also a pretty good underwater creature as well. You know, it really does have 
quite a lot of agility underwater, albeit doesn't pack the most amount of damage. It still is extremely useful, especially in ASA actually now, as insects no longer have levels. In at number 7, we have the Baryonyx, and this creature had to be here in my opinion, and a lot of people are actually moving over to creatures like the Shadowman now for all of their caving needs, but I really do think the Baryonyx deserves a place on the list, and actually deserves a place in everyone's art life for being a great caving creature, albeit the Shadowman can do a hell of a lot more than the baryonyx in quite a lot of aspects the baryonyx can also do a couple of things which you know the shadow man can't the first main advantage actually to this thing is its taming method is so much easier and you can obviously because of that get it much earlier in the game and also it can stun creatures underwater as well albeit yeah not the biggest edge over the shadow man i still think it really has a very useful place as a very great caving creature and i've used these things for years and years now and Albeit, yes, Shadow Mains are great for doing cave runs. I still always come back to this creature. It's just the general basics for me. I just, I know how to use this creature really well and effectively. And I don't really think that I need anything more than a Baryonyx. And albeit, a Shadow Mane can be very useful and all. But if I think that you don't really need anything more than a Baryonyx, then maybe do you actually need more than the Baryonyx? And this thing is very easily possible not to say that it's a bad creature and it's like oh well, you don't really need anything more than it it is still a very great creature it's just it's much easier to get your hands on next up we have got the dimorphodon and this is a very brief entry obviously because the beer off of this thing is really short because there's not too much to say but they're just really great small pack flying creatures and they could deal a heck of a lot of damage especially to players as they do player based damage instead of rider based damage which can play a huge advantage in a lot of scenarios and i think people don't give this creature enough credit and that's why it's on this list and next up in number five in the number five spot of course we have the carnotaurus and most people just be like well the aloe's better there's there's nothing more to say but we're talking about underrated creatures here and Obviously, the aloe isn't really too much of an underrated creature. Yeah, the rex gets a lot more attention than it, and the giga gets a lot more attention than the aloe, but I think the carno gets even less attention, and especially less attention than this creature actually deserves, as this is pretty much my favourite art creature, but I'm not going to be so biased and just put my favourite art creature right there in the number one spot, because there are a lot of other art creatures which are extremely useful to me, and this is... Yes, albeit my favourite, it's it still, in my opinion, doesn't deserve to be in the number one spot, as there are some more useful underrated creatures, and my personal and emotional bias, I'm not going to play a huge factor into this video, because, you know, I'm making this for you, I'm not making it for me. If I was making it for me, they kind of be right in the number one spot, but I'm making it for you, so I'm slightly generalising my list here. The reason why I think the Kano is so good, I don't know why it's taken me so long, I've just blabbered on about everything it deals the bleed ability it's relatively small compared to things like the aloe it does a sizable amount of damage it's got a good health stat and it's got good mobility and albeit its weight isn't perfect it could definitely be a little bit higher still is really an ideal creature for me when i think of a carnivore i go straight to the carno and they're ridiculously easy to tame too especially in asa because you can just kill the parent and then press e on that baby if obviously there's a baby relative to the parents of the Carnotauruses. Next up, we have got the Megalosaurus, and loads of people really like this creature, and I've heard them in my comments, but when I think of bigger ARC YouTubers, and when they do their top 10s, I never really hear this creature being mentioned, unless maybe in an aberration circumstance, and albeit they're really useful then, the night time still makes up quite a big proportion of your arc playtime, especially if you're on aberration, then it's 100% of it. But we're not going to be talking about how great this thing is in aberration, because that's pretty much when this creature gets brought up or everyone talks about. No, on any map, as soon as it turns into nightfall, this creature is so, so deadly and it really does pack a punch. And it can even carry creatures around in its mouth and absolutely turn them to shreds to actually save me from a huge clan of Microraptors, if that's even a thing. But yeah, they really do pack a punch in terms of the damage department. They will tear things like the Kano to shreds, even things like Rexes and Alphas and all of that. They can just take out with so much ease and they're such a small, like, versatile carnivore. It really does help them that they have all of this power behind it as they're very mobile and very easy to use, very easy to control, and actually, frankly, pretty easy to control. Control? Tame. That's what I meant. 
Did I? I something. Either way, they're pretty much easy in every aspect. Not as actually so easy to tame in the location they're in, but the actual taming method is very simple. I've kind of gone a, a bit off here, but you know, it's essentially the Trudon on loads of steroids, and it's so much easier to tame the Trudon if the, the Trudon would never make this list, of course. But yeah, the Megalosaurus is in at number four. Next up, we have the Velonosaur, and for me, this is just the upgraded Megalosaurus. It deals tons of damage. It can deal range damage, and it's around for all the day. It doesn't just need to be around in night time. Albeit, the Megalosaurus definitely has its place on this list. The Velonosaur is my preferred creature. And, you know, some people may not agree with that. Do actually, do you agree with that? Are you a Velonosaur or a Megalosaurus person? Or a Carnotaurus person? Or a Baryonyx person? Or what's your preferred kind of small carnivore? I know I've done many small carnivore top 10 lists before, but... I actually want to know what your favourite small carnivals are, so make sure to comment that down below. And, you know, when I think of the Velonosaur, I really do think of sheer power. And albeit, when you level up its melee, its actual turrets don't increase in damage. If you just crank that stamina stat like I just did there, you can fire these things for ages into creatures and just absolutely decimate them. And I had a ridiculously high level theory here. It was in the 1,000-somethings. And I didn't force them a particularly high level Velonosaur, so it... It's kind of looking like it takes ages in this scenario, and obviously you wouldn't use them at this close of a range, but when you have a good level Velonosaur, you really can take out creatures like it's an FPS game, just straight like that, and that's why I absolutely love this creature. Now, the Crystal Wyvern has to be here on the list, and loads of people talk about the Wyvern just being so great and all that, and yes, I do think the Wyvern is a great creature, I just don't think it gets a... It, no, what am I thinking of? The Crystal Wyvern, sorry, doesn't get a good enough rep as it should. And the normal Wyverns get the reputation that the Crystal Wyverns should be getting as well. As they are kind of the same creature, it's just they don't come in the Wyvern trenches and they've got another word in front of their name. So they must be worse variants of these creatures, which obviously are the Wyverns, which you'll know from Scorched Earth, as that's the map they released on. But they're far easier to tame than normal wyverns, and the Blood Crystal Wyvern is my absolute favourite wyvern. And the Lightning Wyvern doesn't even come close to the coolness and usefulness of the ability which you can get out of a Blood Crystal Wyvern. And again, I know I'm saying it again, they're so easy to tame. You just need to be level 65 and have been able to either knock out or kill Crystal Wyvern. I think it's knockout. And then you've got that Primal Crystal, and then you can simply just passive tame these things and boom like that you have yourself a wyvern and albeit there's no saddles so they have no armor but normal wyverns don't have that either i really do think these creatures do deserve some consideration in a list of the most underrated creatures in 2024 as hardly anyone seems to talk about these things and in at number one we have got the bloodstalker and i had to put this creature here okay i really like the bloodstalker at the moment and Albeit, yes, you can maybe say it isn't the most underrated creature, but for the use that I use it for, I do think it is underrated, and that's why I've chucked it right in the number one spot, and as soon as I thought of making this video, this was the first creature that came to mind for me, so I was like, I have to put this thing in at the number one spot. It is the greatest water tame, in my opinion, with no comparison whatsoever, and yes, it doesn't have immunity to things like electric eels and jellyfish, but... It's so quick, it can get out of there, like, you don't even have to think about it. It's just, it's so agile on the water, it can skim across the top of the water as well. And even if they do get you, it's not going to be the biggest issue. You can get yourself out of there, or you can handily deal the damage to take them all out as well. And they're not just useful in the water like most normal water creatures, which obviously just die if they're not in the water. No, these things can be taken out anywhere and used in all kinds of various situations that aren't in the water as well. And that's what makes this creature so good. And they're just so versatile, but mainly for underwater exploration, underwater travel, and just general underwater things. These are my preferred creature. And they're just, they're so good. Underwater caving, underwater getting getting into underwater bosses. I wouldn't actually bring them into the mode of boss fight. That's, they're not, they're not really gonna survive there. They're not boss fighting creatures, but for anything that you're already doing underwater, apart from the mode of boss fight, these things 
are really your perfect creatures and I don't get why people don't talk about these things being such great underwater creatures as much as I do. But anyway, that is the end of today's video and I really hope that you all enjoyed this one. And as always, comment down below what is the most underrated art creature in 2024 as I want to know your thoughts and do you agree with this list? And with that, I'll see you all later.